I feel like I should probably just warn everyone before I start this review that one of my favorite, if not my favorite director at the moment, is Taika Waititi. Taika, so Ta- Taika Waititi. As yes, yeah, so I'm I'm probably gonna keep saying it my way, but um, <laughs> very good. No problem. <laughs> um, so I, I am coming to this from, I guess, maybe a little bit of a biased perspective. Um, but this is this is the third form, third Thor film. So there have been two Thor films previously, Thor and Thor the Dark World. And this does continue on directly from Thor the Dark World, which I feel like I should bring everyone up to date because I feel like, like me, not everyone is closely following the events of the Marvel Cinematic Universe. Uh, so at the does, end... Of- does this not also come after Age of Ultron? Yes. And Spider-Man Homecoming? Yes. And Civil but War? I feel like in terms of knowing... The film opens essentially where Thor the Dark World ends, which is at the end of that film, you see Thor leaving Asgard and then you see on the throne, it's not Odin, it's actually been Loki this whole time and Odin has disappeared somewhere far off. And with Loki on the throne of Asgard, he's not been doing such a great job and that leaves the whole place very vulnerable to a new threat. Let's just say maybe the goddess of death, Hela, played by Kate Blanchett, who is... Just so fabulous, as always. And she has these incredible antler headdress thing going on and she sort of magically takes it off and puts it on and every time she t- like puts it on, she rubs her hands down her hair and it just magically appears. And every time she did it, I had a small tingle go through my body. <laughs> um, just quite incredible. Um, and I think what is very noticeable, because I rewatched the two Thor films before seeing this, is that... Thor Ragnarok is incredibly different from those. It very much belongs to the post-Guardians of the Galaxy Marvel Universe, where now the studio, they're getting a little bit more confident. They feel like they can have a little bit more fun with their films. And so here comes the hiring of Taika Waititi, which I feel like people will probably know him from What We Do in the Shadows, Hunt for the Wilder People, He Also Did Boy, Eagle vs. Shark, all incredible films, which you should see if you haven't seen them yet. (laughs) I will personally recommend them. And I think, you know, everyone talks about how Marvel films are funny now. So I think it's no great surprise that Thor Ragnarok is very, very funny. But what surprised me was that it's funny in a very Taika Waititi way. It feels so much like one of his films. And it's almost indistinguishable in the humour from what we do in the shadows, which is surprising to me. Um, And especially because he said in interviews that he relied a lot on improvisation. Like, I think he said like 10% of the film is improvised or or something, that number might be wrong. Um, Which is surprising because, you know, over in Star Wars land at the moment, you have Phil Lord and Christopher Miller who were directing the young Han Solo film. They were fired for improvisation. So, yeah, I think... That that's surprising. I guess it's the difference between where Marvel is creatively and where Star Wars is creatively. Um, and I think possibly the the funniest character of the film is Korg, who is played by Taika Waititi. I thought he was so, absolutely inspired. Yeah, I mean, it's kind of funny that he made himself the scene stealer of the entire film. Is Quite a cheeky well, move. For, for those people who don't know, so Korg is this kind of, I don't know, seven, eight feet high rock monster. He's kind of monster made of rocks. And uh, Taika uh, said that he decided to base his voice on New Zealand bouncers, who are really big, but have uh, quite um, soft voices. And so he... That's a good impression. That is good. <laughs> and that was just brilliant. I mean, I thought yeah. it was just... I mean, I could... As a setup for a Korg film... It was perfect. I'd, I'd watch a Korg film. Yeah, and it was very clever because he was always there. Whenever stuff got a little bit too epic or serious or a little too Marvel-esque, he would just undercut it with a, a quick little line and then everything would go back to being very Taika Waititi again. And I think as well, I was surprised to see how much the characters of Thor and Loki had actually changed in this film because they're completely different from any Marvel film you've seen before. I mean, and they've been changed to a very... Like I keep saying Taika Waititi esque, which is the only way that I can describe this film. It's well, incredibly I, Taika Waititi esque. I, I, I heard an interview with him, uh, um, with Ta- Taika, and uh, one of the things he was saying was about he was talking about New Zealand humour mm. and what that is. And he said, like most of my films, he said it's it's two people talking about the mundanity of life. 
He said, you know, it's the little things. And so this film is full of little two-handers, whether it's Thor and Hulk or Thor and Loki or the Grandmaster and Loki. I mean, there's lots of little scenes where two people are discussing the kind of minutiae of life. And a lot of the humour is culled from that, which I think is sets it apart from the humour in a lot of the other Marvel films. Yeah, absolutely. And I think as well... Um, so I, I also spoke to him in an interview about this, and the thing I've always picked up from his films is all of his characters, the humour comes from insecurity. And so, you know, Thor usually is meant to be this embodiment of masculinity. He's strong and powerful and very serious. And I think in this film... It's him trying to live up to that image the entire way through. And he's obsessed with the idea that he's the strongest Avenger. Like, why? I'm the strongest Avenger. Why would I not be the strongest Avenger? I'm Thor. And I think that's what's particularly beautiful about this film, because it just brings this little touch of humanity to everything, especially. And I feel like I've been talking a lot about the boys at the moment, but I need to give a shout out as well to the women of this film. There's at least... Three prominent, incredibly well-written and layered women in this, which is very rare for Marvel movies, unfortunately. Uh, yeah, particularly Tessa Thompson yeah. as Valkyrie. I thought it was a fantastic oh, introduction. Well, I'm like in love with her now. <laughs> in fact, I mean, I, with those kind of characters, with Valkyrie and, uh, you know, obviously the Hulk we've had, Grandmaster, uh, I could easily watch spin-off films with all of them. I thought yeah. they were just kind of layered enough uh, yeah. to have that. It's all about the characterization, which is so wonderful. <laughs> 